Hi, my name is Eileen Hull and I'm a licensed artist with Sizzix. This is one of my new dies in the collection from Vintage Kitchen. It's the 3D mug. So we're going to learn how to use embossing powder to create a faux enamelware look and also how to make this cute little metal spoon. So to make this little 3D mug, the materials that you're going to need are this mug die. Now this is coming out from Vintage Kitchen in November, so it's not available yet, but uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So you could use this for hot chocolate, for coffee, for iced tea, for great little gifts. And the spoon is also a bonus, and I just think that is so cute. The other die that we're going to use is one called Make It 3D die, and I'm really excited about this because there are a lot of possibilities for you to use dies that you already have. So what they do is they make they create this little well that you see inside. So if you have a, a shape that you love, you just cut two of them, and then you take one of these, whichever one fits best, and you can use that to insert in between both of the other two pieces that you have to make it 3D. Um, so that's what we'll be doing. And we're also going to be using some metal. This is from MD Hobby and Craft, and I really like this because it's a great thickness, it holds its shape, and you can also emboss it, which I think you can see here. It's really cute. So what we're going to do is line up our mat board on our Big Shot. I like to use my long plate on the bottom so that if it shifts a little bit, I still have a cushion there. And I want to position this so that the metal is going to match up with the spoon. So the way that I'm going to do that is to kind of get an idea here. And I have some ThermoWeb adhesive that is double-sided. So I'm going to put the metal on that first. And then I'm going to peel the back off. Okay, so we are, here we have a piece of metal and we have adhesive on the back that is ready to stick to the mat board. So what I'm going to do is just place that on my die so I know that's going to cut right where it's supposed to. And I'm going to take my mat board and place it on top. And I'm going to cut it. Again, I'm going to use my short plate because I don't want to roll it through any more than I have to. So see, you have a nice little metal spoon. So the next thing we're going to do is emboss that. We're going to use our platform. You don't need to use any tabs on here, again, um, because it's already thick. And I'm just going to emboss the handle in here. And I want to show you a trick that I learned after only five years of doing this, I will share this with you. If you don't want, sometimes if you see the edge here, you get a little mark where it rolls over that and presses down. If you don't want that on your spoon, just adjust your plate so that it just hits th where the pattern ends. So now I'm going to roll that through. And you can see you have a nice clean little etching. Okay, so now we have a cute little spoon. Now we need to make our mug. So, I'm using some embossing paste from my friend Wendy Becky. just came out and it's, this is called Cornflower Blue. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the color box blends to ink up our mug we want to make sure that we're doing the right side because as you can see when you put this together both handles have to be in the right place so we're going to be inking this side of the mug we have this side done I'm going to do this side so we're going to take our color box blend snap off the lid and just start applying ink all around now this one I inked up pretty well before I started just to make it go faster and the way that you can re-ink this is just dot it and then swirl it around to distribute the ink throughout the sponge. You can even do that right on here because we're going to give it a solid coat. Okay, you do want to make sure that it's pretty wet. So I'm going to go do the handle there. Then you're just going to take your powder. It's 
sprinkle it on and kind of jiggle it around a little bit. And if I do have spots where it's not on there, I'll just pick some up and or even leave it because we could add a color on there and it might look kind of cool. Okay, then we're going to heat it with our heat gun. So I'm just going to move that over. I like to let mine warm up a little bit first. Okay, then we're going to emboss it. So here we have a nicely embossed little mug and we're going to give it a faux enamel wear look by using this splatter stamp by Wendy Vecchi. And we're going to use the uh, white color box, or actually it's called coconut color box blends to get a fun impression on that. So I randomly inked. I didn't really worry about getting it all over the whole front. And we just place it on top and press. And there we have a nice little enamelware piece. Now the other thing that we're going to do is we used, we, I die cut a piece from the Make It 3D die and then I also added a little color to this. So this is going to be our well. I'm using Thermo Web iCraft tape to put it together and I like to just cover the whole piece here because when you go to um, put it on the piece, this tape in between helps it all to stick together. So. I'm going to peel this off. Well, actually, first I'm going to, like I told you before, uh, you're going to fold over all of these. What happens when you do this is that you're breaking the fibers of the mat board because you have layers and layers of paper. Um, sometimes it wants to resist when you go to make a fold in it, so you're just breaking those fibers down so that it's easier to work with it. And I fold it all the way over so they're totally broken. Now if you wanted you could also color the inside of the well here but probably you're not going to be looking in there because you'll have it filled with different things. So okay so now I'm going to remove the liner and somebody told me a trick is that you start peeling it off in the middle and it really works. Wish I had known that a while ago. I think I broke one of these when I was bending it. Okay, so now we have this part. So now we're going to make it 3D. On this one, I inked the back, so let's do that to make it match. I'm just going to do it real quick, just to give it a little color inside. Sometimes you can see the top part and also the handles. Okay. I don't want to ink the inside too much because sometimes if you have a lot of ink here it's wet and the tape will not stick to it. So, so now I'm going to fold it up into the shape that will go inside and see how that tape is keeping it all together. Now if this is something that you really want to stick together you might want to use hot glue but this works fine. You can also use like a a wet glue beacon or whatever you have on hand. So I'm just placing it down on one side and on the other. And it's popping up. Okay, so there we have one half of the well, as you can see. Now we're going to take the other one. I like to stand it up so it matches up. And then I'll hold my hands on either side and just press it together. And then you want to take something, you might want to take like a bone folder and stick it in here. Well, your fingers work pretty well too. And just make sure that it's sticking down. Okay, so now we have the little mug. Now we're just going to add a label and our little spoon to it. And I used my inks to um, dye this. I just added a little touch of brown and then on the label I also did that. So 
there's your little 3D mug. So if you don't need your mug to be 3D, there are other ways that you can use it too. And uh, here's one, uh, one of my design team has designed a canvas and just used that and spelled out, I think, latte it says on there, which I thought was really cute. And for the card makers, you can just take your little die cut pieces and add them to the front of cards.